Uh, by the way, these are going to be short videos because my editing thing has gone up the creek, so I can't uh, edit clips together. Uh, I used a, that's a vacuum pump to suck out all the petrol. I've, I've run her up again and uh, it carried on for another couple of minutes, so empty. Right, I'm going to take all the plugs out now. Um, unfortunately on this bike, the ignition fuse, if you pull that, it um, cuts the power to the starter motor, so I can't turn it over without spark, hence the reason I'm going to have to earth these. It's just for safety, I don't want fuel and spark while I'm turning the engine over with the cylinders open while I'm doing a compression test. So um, basically, the plug spanner that comes in the toolkit, luckily this bike had one in, and then a 17mm ring spanner and take them out. I've tried all manner of combination of trying to get ratchets with short <coughs> short sockets on them to get these plugs out, but in the end, the actual tool you get with a bike does the job. I don't know if that's gonna focus. Yeah. Plugs a decent colour. Don't worry about the oil around the thread, that is actually um, anti-seize. So I'm going to take all four of those out and pop them into the leads and then figure out a way of earthing all of these to the, to the engine somewhere. Or frame. Engine's probably best because it's used to being in the engine. Okay, back in a minute. See, I can pause this and then start it, but I can't join any two separate clips together and I can't turn the camera around because my software for, uh, my software has gone berserk and I can't use it. So I shall pause this, hopefully. All right, this is what I've gone for. It's a bit belt and braces, you don't need to do it. If you're happy with your spark just arcing across onto wherever the plugs are near while you're cranking it with no fuel, that's fine, but for, I've got time, so all I've done is I've taken some household cable, stripped it back, wrapped it around the threads of the plugs, tightened it up, put some insulation around, hopefully to stop it arcing across, and then I've literally just earthed it to the one of the manifold studs. Um, yeah, and I'm just about to do the same on the other side. Okay, that's done on both sides. I've taped up the clutch lever because you have to pull it in to start the bike. <clears throat> so now I've got no fuel, no spark near the cylinders. I've just uh, fired it up, no, not fired it up, I've just spun it over to check that the sparks are going where they should. So I can see the sparks on each plug as I turn it. It's very faint, the, the light is terrible out here, it's too bright. And also I'm guessing this massive amount of lead and earth cable is making the spark weak, but just as a, you probably won't be able to see this at all. There is a spark, but it's, hang on, here we go. No, we don't, <laughs> let's turn it. Turn the kill switch on. Yeah, sorry, you probably couldn't see that, but there's a spark on all four, and it seems to be quite quite even or regular. Uh, just, uh, <laughs> I can't do this, can't turn it round. Anyway, I'll be back in a bit. Uh, I'll clear up my mess. Back in a bit and uh, start doing compression test. I better put it back on the old battery charger thing just to keep it good. Oh, the other thing is I've got to remember to, in fact, I'll probably do that now. I've got to hold the throttle wide open when I'm actually doing it. We'll get to that later. I'll probably tape this somehow, bodge it, tape it open. Right, so another short piece of the story. 
and I shall be back in the next bit with a compression tester hooked up. So, cheers. I'll see you in a bit. I've been springy.